Hi guys, this is Nadia from Bunny Crafts and today I want to show you how to make this copper cuff bracelet with a pattern core. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button because I upload new stuff on a regular basis. I quite often make kits and PDF tutorials for the videos I put up on here and I'll pop a link in the description below. Um, I also have all sorts of gemstones, square and half round wire, some beads and all sorts of other goodies on my website. So take a gander over and see if there's anything you fancy. Last but not least, come and join us in our uh, wire wrappers and metal smiths group on Facebook. I'll also pop a link below. Right, let's get started. Right, so today I wanted to show you how to make um, coils for your designs. It's something that I've been using in my designs for a few years now. I really like how they add detail to your design. Um, this is a piece I've made, it's my absolute favourite. So I made this one a while ago and it's absolutely packed with coils and you can see that um, it gives the design a lot of detail. Um, I've used small coils, I've used larger coils, different types of coils. Um, there are so many different ways you can actually incorporate these into your designs and they're actually really quite easy to, to create. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, here I've got two different types. So one is a little bit larger and then you've got a smaller one. And the only difference between the two of them is that they were made with different wire gauges. And um, you can see there's a coil consists of three different wire gauges these ones anyway you've got your base uh, wire which is usually the one that you wrap the other coils around um, and i tend to use 0 0.8 20 gauge for that um, as i use the ends once i've attached them to my piece usually to create more designs so that's a good base and then depending on how thick you want the actual coil to be, you can use some 0.6, which is 20 gauge, and then go finer with your 0 0.4 or 0 0.3, which is 26 and 28 gauge respectively to get the finer sort of detail if you want. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you how to make these coils. So as I said just now, you need three different wires. So you've got your base coil, and then you got your second base coil, I mean wire, sorry, I'm talking about wire. So you got your base wire and then you got your second base wire. And then you have the coiling wire, which will create the actual coil itself. Now, there are many ways to actually do the coiling. So I'm going to use the point, this is point 0.6 in this design here. And I'm going to use that. This is my second base coil and we're going to be starting with that. So we need to be attaching our, uh, our coiling wire to the second base wire and we're going to start wrapping it around like so. Now this is the slow way. This will take a while and there's some purists that don't like to use power tools. Um, I'm not one of them so I quite like to use my power tools. So what you can do um, to do this quicker is you bring in a cordless drill like this one here and this one has got an adjustable chuck so we're going to be adding these wire ends into this chuck so I've already attached some of the wires here and I'm going to just trim off that one end and then I'm going to be adding this to the chuck itself it needs to be just long enough so that they can just slide into this chuck here and then some people attach the wire others don't i like to have a little bit of a wire already attached so when i then tighten the chuck it's grabbing onto something going the wrong way i think there we go so just enough so that when you tighten up the chuck it has got something to hold on to you can tell that it's nice and tight when it's the ratchet starts to go so now normally when you start twisting there is a reverse and then there is a forward on the drill so you can see that this will rotate in a clockwise direction and you can switch these over usually here and then it will go in the other direction um, if you do this slowly you won't have any problem but the minute you go fast this whole thing will start to whip around like crazy. 
so um, one thing you can do to keep it from doing that is I'm just going to find one of these wheels that has got so this is one of the reels. I'm just going to open this up. So what I tend to do normally is I take one of these reels and I slide this wire in. Have it one roll off. Um, and then I can go faster once to roll off. So anything really that you can slide this through that will keep it in place. And then you can just and you can go quite fast. My battery's running up. Not great. So I'm just going to keep going until it runs out. I'll just try and keep it tight. I'm getting a bit uh, untidy here, which is fine. So just keep going and I've got a little kink in the wire so I'm going to undo this so you would then just generally keep going and you see it's a little bit uneven so you can then compress it bring it down a bit to make a nice neat coil so obviously the length of this will determine the length of this eventually because you're going to wrap this small coil around your first base wire and this will then create this so these this, the amount of wire just depends on how tight a wrapper you are so i always try and give sort of a guideline in all of my tutorials of how much wire i've used but the length of your coil is generally going to be slightly different from mine because we all have different tensions and different ways to wrap the coil so it's just a guideline really um so as i said it depends how long you make this to get um a quilt so i'm going to just try and go a little bit longer to get some more all right so that is my mini coil i didn't get that much out of it in the end because my battery just died but anyway I, that was enough um and i always leave a tail at the end and i will show you why i do this in a minute so once we've finished with this coil we're going to go to our first base wire so this is going to be the wire we're going to be attaching this coil to and i always try and kind of make this coil central so you can shift this around once you attach it doesn't really matter where but i still try and sort of uh, make it so that it sits in the middle so i'm going to leave roughly about 10 centimeters on this end which is what four inches i'm not 100 percent sure and i'm just going to attach this wire and wrap it tightly now as i said at this stage the coil length entirely depends on how you wrap if you hold the coil tight at the end so it can't shift up as you wrap it will be a really really tight coil now if you let it run so when you're twisting it it will automatically expand and your coil will be a little bit longer so it depends how you do the wrapping so i just tend to coil it like that and then once you have a little bit of leverage you can then go ahead and just do the twisting and whatever works for you everybody is different um so i then just do the twist and i try and be as tight as possible i think i'm going to keep going with this way at the moment because i can work neater so you just keep going until you get to the end All right so i'm getting towards the end so now what some people do is you can take the remaining second base wire and you can keep coiling it around the main base if you want as an added detail and then kind of use that detail um, to add some extra stuff to your design if you wanted to now often the coils will have little gaps in them so always try and tighten it up by twisting and pushing so 
I twist and push at the same time and this will tighten the coil up nicely just remember not to do it too much otherwise you're going to break the central coil you just want it nice and tight so that every loop is buttoned up against the next one so now this is for me an unrefined coil and why I'm saying this is because it looks quite rustic to me and one way to make these coils look a little bit more refined is we're going to be using the leftover wire from the small coil we create and we're going to be following the direction of the coil going downwards so I'm just going to figure out which way it's going to, and kind of fill the gaps that is in between and you can do it like I'm doing just now or you can rotate the coil it's a little bit quicker this way so you can kind of rotate and the wire will lay itself it helps to have these ends straight so that when you're rotating it doesn't whip around and it will kind of lay itself into the gaps all by itself it will follow the sort of direction and that's why initially I said that we needed to make sure that the gaps are closed up so you can see how the wire now lays itself in between it follows the sort of grooves I need to put my glasses on because I can't actually see where the <laughs> where the wire is going so keep going and then when you get to the end I kind of wedge this wire into the little groove that I've created earlier like so and that is a coil so that's super easy to do and then obviously when we're finished all we're going to do is cut trim off the ends And that's that so once you've tidied up the coil you can use it in any design you like obviously they work great in pendants and in your bracelets and even as um, you know stand standalone sort of designs if you wanted to you can use them in um, and that's that that's a mini tutorial on how to make a basic coil thank you so much for watching and um, don't forget to subscribe as i upload new stuff on a regular basis and as I said earlier, come and visit me on my Facebook page. Um, I've got TikTok, Instagram and um, YouTube. Obviously, as you know, this is going to get uploaded there. Um, and I would absolutely love it if you would come and join our artist group on Facebook, which is called Wire Wrappers and Metalsmith Worldwide. Um, and last but not least, I will pop a link to my shop uh, where you can find kits, PDF tutorials and gemstones. And that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching.